Hello everyone, welcome back to Messing with the Shuttle in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with Realism Overhaul. It is the anniversary of the first shuttle mission, STS-1, April 12th, and we have set the date to April 12th, 1981. Uh, the launch happened at 12 o'clock UTC, well, plus four seconds. But uh, yeah, so we're about 50 minutes ahead of that as far as Kerbal Alarm Clock is concerned, which should put us uh, close to dawn. And we need to make adjustments to the Giulio Dondi shuttle so that we can use it to simulate the mission. So that is my goal, uh, to try and uh, replicate the mission accurately. I've done this before, and I set the mission audio to it, but, um, well, frankly, my re-entry script and landing script weren't that great. So uh, now that we have a better one, uh, we might as well try it again. So uh, we need to change this to the right version. So we need Columbia 1981, and we need to do the wings as well. Oh, the wings are built in now. Columbia tiles, Columbia tiles, yes. Did did Columbia already have the silts pod? Mm, it just seems to have extra tiles at the top. No, I don't think it has the silts pod yet. Okay. Um, hopefully that's correct. And our engines can no, no longer be the better engines, the D slash E's. Phase 1 SSME. Okay, double check they're all on the same one. Yes. And of course the external tank can't be this orange color. It was the white color. So we want the regular tank. Standard weight tank. Well, old casing for the boosters is correct. So I think we're all configured except for the payload. We are not carrying this tank. We are not carrying the docking port up front. We are carrying the shuttle development flight instrumentation, about a five ton payload that they carried on STS-1. Now, you probably won't have this model. Um, I think I have to attach it to the bottom there. So we'll need a little makeshift node on the bottom of the bay here. I thought that brace was side to side, but I think it's actually forward and back. No, okay, this is this is the way it is, I think. All right, so there we go. That is the development flight instrumentation kit. And that is the payload for SDS-1. Again, a custom model, you won't have that. You'll have to make boxes all on your own if you wanted to try this. The launch site is, of course, Pad 39A, if you're using Cape Canaveral HD. And I've got extra scenery added, so that's from real launch sites. I have set the launch script to an apoapsis of 246 uh, the cutoff altitude, uh, I was told to keep the same for this particular launch script. It's at 112, even though they cut off at 118. The inclination is 40.3 for the mission. And actually, they were supposed to get into 240 by 240 circular. They ended up in 248 by 246. But that may have been because of the uh, delay, because they launched two days late. So. That might be the thing. Uh, they had to scrub the first attempt. We'll inevitably be a few seconds off, probably. And our Kerbals aren't named properly. Actually, we should at least only have two Kerbals in. Hold on. We will have a Mark Moreau and Gail Edwards. And for some reason, there's a Kerbal renamer thing in here, so the Kerbals don't get proper Kerbal names. Technically, the initial orbit might not be 246 or 248, because they did OMS burns after that. I mean, of course, you need at least one, but they probably did two. Unlike John Young, I won't be taking manual control on landing. I'll let the system try to land it. Well, I'm going to start the script now.
three seconds or four seconds late. And off we go. So it's been 33 years since the actual STS-1 flight. And we throttle down, we're past the speed of sound. We have reached max Q, it says right there. And back to throttle up. Well, let's get the, since it's under control, I mean, we can just get this view. Not a whole lot of clouds today. Okay, booster set. That still needs to have it cleaner. Now the shuttle is going to roll over here, and that's because I don't know how to turn that off with this launch script. Uh, but the, on STS-1 it did not roll over because they hadn't launched the TDRA satellites, the data satellites yet. And it rolls over for connection with those. Though I sort of like it to roll over anyway because it makes the separation of the external tank sort of nicer. It's just an aesthetic thing. Also a not bumping into a thing. Inclination wise we're getting there. At 39.5 out of 40.3 is what we want. And it's rolling. Okay, we're back on the line again. Okay, final phase to orbit. 253, it overshot a bit. I should have just set it to 240. Then it would have overshot by the right amount. Okay. And it is done. Alright. Inclination a little bit more than we wanted, but... Alright. So we can close that. And actually... I'm going to retro a little bit. Find the RCS to get to uh, 248 apoapsis, and then we'll just round it up. Oh, actually, it was 40.35 degrees inclination, maybe. So, I guess we're all right. Okay, over Africa here, Ethiopia ish. Probably not where they did it, but... There were two OMS burns, one soon after external tank set, and one a little bit after this would be after 10 more minutes. So, so... We need to sort of adjust this with RCS, probably. Okay, after many weird RCS burns, I've gotten it to... Mm, 249 by 246. I think we'll take that. And we do have to do two more RC, uh, OMS burns. And that is to raise the orbit to 273, well, basically 274 by 274. So it's 273.9 by 274.1. But at 6 hours and 20 minutes, we do one. And then at 7 hours and 5 minutes, we do the other. This is Wikipedia. <laughs> I mean, uh, I've got other sources, but Wikipedia actually has the times for the third and fourth OMS burns, so we will go with that. Otherwise, our orbital period will be wrong and we won't be in the correct position for coming back, though the script should be able to handle that. Well, not a huge surprise this burn happens over the United States. Okay, close enough, OMS-3. And we won't go with the exact time on OMS-4, we'll just go by where our apoapsis is. Which should be right. Should be right. 
Technically, they did these burns with one engine, I think. Okay, well, that's probably as close to 274 as I'm going to get it. All right, 274 by 274. There we are. It's basically the average between those. So, we've got that. And we really just need to worry about coming back as far as what we can do here. Can't do any special experiments. But speaking of coming back, I should probably check that Edwards Air Force Base is actually, you know, there. I installed the Space Audi version of STS locations for Edwards Air Force Base, and we need to take a flight out with a T-38 to see that it is proper. So I'm going to save, and we will see about that. Okay, so with STS locations, it does give us the Kerbal Constructs locations, and we want Edwards Runway 23. That is where we are going to be landing at. And I'm going to take a look at it with the T-38 to make sure there's nothing untoward about it. NASA did the same thing on the day of landing or shortly before landing, checking it out with the shuttle trainer aircraft or and or t-38s i think and probably um i think we have a problem <laughs> uh, uh why what 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 is going on here uh oh oh no Um, I mean, I see markings down there, but that's, it's just not right. <laughs> this is, this is a problem. Uh-oh. I'm just wondering what's going to happen. Okay, well, well, the ground is there, but this does not look like Edwards. I don't know what's going on here. This is the first time I've used... Uh, STS locations, but I think it's safe to say something's gone horribly wrong here. I had tried Ballistic Fox's Edwards scenery, and that's much heftier. It actually worked a little bit better, I think. Um, but not well enough that I decided to use that either. Uh, maybe it's... I had placed that runway there. Maybe that was my mistake. Hold on. Let me see what's going on here. Local instances. Well, we don't want... I think we don't want that. That might have been me. But then we have this thing. The space plane hangar is floating above the surface. We see a runway down there. It's really, really bright. And we... we maybe we should just not have these either. This is the spawner. Okay. We probably want this down. <laughs> I mean, landing-wise, I mean, it depends on whether the shuttle knows where to land, right? But this is a really bright thing. There's another thing floating there. Okay, no, I think this is a problem. I'm, I'm just going to bring in my own Edwards. <laughs> uh, for some reason, everybody else's Edwards seem to have problems. Okay, will my own Edwards landscape have similar problems? The issue is, potentially, that I have Irises Reborn in here. So... Things should work with it. Um, okay, well, I don't know what... Oh, that, that runway does not need to be there. Okay, so we're, we're good. My, my landscape works. <laughs> At least, even with our sister born, it looks like. But we have to measure it out for the sake of the landing script. So first of all, let's get rid of that extra runway floating up there. It's actually a little bit too clipped into the ground. Um, should be a little bit higher up, potentially rotated differently. But this is the, let's see. The shuttle will be coming in from that side, and this is not the runway. It's that one. So, alright. 
Let's let's taxi. <laughs> but yeah, the heading is subtly off here. And also part of the scenery is, seems to be clipped into the ground. And I don't know what's going on with the little texture that we've got. So the, uh, I think it's the shadows. They're messing it, messing with it. Yeah, I think it sort of stretches further than this. No, maybe this is about the end. Let's just mark this position. That seems like a rather short length though. But there is the run-up bit. Okay, let me mark this in the script and then we'll try it out. Try to come down here. It's only a 210 instead of 230. So we've got that little mistake. It's possible that my landscape just isn't scaled right here. And actually it should be scaled larger. Because the runway is too short. It's only 4,000-ish when it should be 5... Well, it actually should be more than 5,000. I think. I think. Okay, anyway, but for now, it should work. Okay, time to wait around a bit. Now, they had a specific entry. It was zero kilometers. The periapsis was zero kilometers for the re-entry. So, regardless of what the re-entry planner is going to tell us, we'll try for zero kilometers. But, well, I'll plot it first, but then... We're going to aim for zero kilometer periapsis. Incidentally, they got to a 274 kilometer circular orbit, but the plan was for 280. <laughs> so, don't know why it was 274, but there we are. Total mission time was two days, six hours, and 20 minutes and 53 seconds. That seems pretty good for Edwards right now, though. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be quite far off from Edwards, isn't it? Edwards is there. I don't know, I guess they were really testing the cross range of this. So this, this whole thing seems a little bit tough to me as far as whether this re-entry program can handle it. We will see. It doesn't want the 1.2, it wants just a 1. Okay, this gets our range nice. Okay, but I'm gonna try for this re-entry burn and we're just gonna set it to 0 kilometers. Now we have to adjust our position quite a bit. It's changed a lot. Let's close up. Making sure to pitch up a little bit for the OMS thrusters. Now there is a node executor that comes with OPS3. So you could use that if you want. And it, I think, compensates for the tilt of the OMS engines. At least Giulio Dondi said so. Okay, go. So according to the notes, uh, this is on Wikipedia again, um, Columbia had to maneuver through 362 miles of cross range, or 583 kilometers. So, and it says roll into a right bank was flown. So, yeah, well, we will have to go right, that's for sure. Is the gap going to be 300? Yeah, I guess it's about right, 362 kilometers. I mean, sorry, 362 miles, 580-ish kilometers. Okay, well, I guess we're on track. Okay, well, that's as close to zero as we're liable to get a uh, few meters, but by the time we turn around, it's going to be completely different. Okay, atmospheric interface time. Ah, oh, the lighting effects are really weird today. We have Dawn on the horizon. 
And we can only run the script at 122 kilometers. Okay, that's off. And go. So, and then we set EAP to auto and uh, Edwards. And runway 21 in this case. It's supposed to be 23, but we've got misaligned a little bit. Let's just sort of hide that behind this one. Ah. And I don't need Kerbal Alarm Clock anymore. Here we go. Let's see if it can manage it. Oh, there had been an air brake problem before. Um, we needed to switch this one to inverted so that it goes the correct way. Yep, oh, it's waiting until it's properly atmospheric before starting its roll. And it sure will roll. In this case, I don't mind it rolling severely because it needs to use the cross range. Here we go. It is rolling. In this case, I'm just not going to interfere with it. If it misses, it misses. It's going to be under its own whims. We've tested it enough for uh, in other situations. We tried it out at a 1.4 uh, degree slope in. And in that case, it didn't quite make the runway, but I also interfered with it in that case, so we'll just see. Maybe 1.2 will be all right. I think I'll have to up the quality of my Edwards Air Force Base. That might be a good idea. It's been pretty firm here. We are still very much over the Pacific. We're down the middle of the channel, so... It's not like we're hitting the bottom boundary or anything, so 1.2 doesn't seem too bad in this case. Especially since we have to use so much cross range, I think. Not that much. I mean, it's not like the limit of the cross range. It's like middle. In the middle of the cross range capabilities. Okay, we do have some overheating though. That is interesting. Well, we've turned so much that we're pretty much in line with Edwards now. You can see the location there and our track. So we've already handled the cross range. We'll go a little bit further and then roll reverse, I presume. Okay, roll reversal. Sixty kilometers in altitude. Our trajectory looks like that at the moment. Okay, flipping around. Okay, we see the coast. There's the Bay Area over there, San Francisco Bay Area. So I don't know why it looks like there's a lot of water right there. There ought not to be. Uh, that part is land <laughs> but well with some rivers but still it is the delta area so it's complicated it might be greener than everything else and it is reversing which it should definitely well i can't quite see where edwards is right now let's see the map okay so edwards is there it's turning right right now which is probably a good idea Seems like it's right on track here. The clouds and the shadows that they cast aren't looking great right now, though. Maybe I should throw in the volumetric clouds in here. Okay, it's turning. I still don't really see the site. The clouds are in the way. Good thing it doesn't have to worry about that. Well, I did not expect to be completely clueless about whether we were approaching properly this late in the game. 
I thought we would be able to see the terrain, but the clouds are causing a problem for that, so... Well, we're going to find out eventually. In real life, they probably would not have liked to have a cloud cover like this over the runway. Well, definitely would not have had the shuttle to land like this. It's a good idea to have the pilots be able to see the location. Well, gosh. I don't know what's going on down there. Ah, uh, oh no. Okay, it did that. I must have staged it somehow. We'll have to do the braking manually. I don't know when that got activated. Please let there be land. <laughs> this is looking very ominous right now. Oh, it's oh, it's so dark because of this is no fun. Okay, I see the runway, but I need to like turn off the clouds. Okay, well, yeah. This is not very easy to see. Darn clouds. Uh, here we go. I think this is a reason to put volumetric clouds in. Oop. I think we're down. <laughs> this is sort of anticlimactic, I apologize. But I didn't expect this cloud cover here. And I need to start breaking here. Okay, now we can see the r runway that we saw earlier. And the program ended itself because we were slow enough, I guess. So it is here. Let let's let the shadows pass a bit. I mean, what could I do? We had to go at the right time. Unfortunately, Kerbal doesn't have weather matching to match the correct weather at this time, but... Anyway, we have time warped a little bit, and, well, that's looking a little bit more like Edwards. All right, and we landed. So the script worked, uh, we went through it, and things seem all right. So there you have it, STS-1, a simulation, sort of. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.